Anyway, he just kind of put on the tough. He told me this. He said, if I can tell you anything, don't ever fool around with the IRS. <laughs> he said, I am telling you, don't even think about it. Yeah, he was scared to death. I could tell. I thought, ooh, boy, it impacted him. Fear is the opposite of faith. Debt places a strain on family relationships. Money concerns are among the primary causes of family arguments. Mismanagement of money can smother love. Debt causes you to become resentful of others rather than reach out to others. You begin to avoid those who, uh, who you owe and at times those you think know about your indebtedness. <laughs> I'm not even going to look up. I had a lot of snickering. Debt can cause you to distrust or look unkindly upon those who seem to have no money problems. It can cause you to become envious. These are not godly attitudes. Debt hurts the testimony of a Christian. It is difficult to declare to the world that you're trusting God to meet all your needs and to be deeply in debt at the same time. Your credibility is destroyed. I began speaking to you on Sunday about this. I think it was Sunday or last Wednesday. Last Wednesday about, and I mentioned tonight, there, there needs to be a plan. You have to have a plan, okay? And oftentimes we plead ignorance about really knowing where we are financially. I would dare to say that somebody in your lifetime has said to you, well, you need to sit down and make a budget. <laughs> and you ran like the wind. And you hate that word. Anytime it comes up, budget! <laughs> because that budget is not spelt to you, B-U-D-G-E-T. It's spelled R-E-S-T-R-A-I-N-T. You're trying to restrain me. I know. Most people don't know where they are. Really. They have an indication or what they think. And they think they know where their priorities, okay? Some people are very meticulous and studious about their finances and they have a really an accurate picture and they can tell you and I know some people that I'm into the penny sister Leslie was that way in Yakima to the penny some people use financial programs like Quicken and Microsoft money I think it is and different ones and so they track their expenses and they you know can pull up a report at any time and they can see <laughs> people who know that know where they are even if there's some indebtedness they got a peace about them. They have a resolve about them. Why? Because they know. On the other hand, the persons that don't have a clue, oh, don't even, you know, those envelopes are still unopened on the counter. <laughs> they're living in la-la land. And they're not interested in living in any other place. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Don't show me. And it's like dodging bullets. <laughs> Who's on the color ID? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Don't answer it. Don't answer it. <laughs> nope, I'm not answering that one. <laughs> Thank God for color IDs. Oh, no. I would like to offer to you a couple of sheets that I've prepared. Um, this is for whosoever will. Okay? 
Jesus' approach was always that way. Whosoever will. I'm not going to make you do anything. I'm going to show you the path and I'll lead you the way. I'm a shepherd. I lead the sheep. And so I would like to just present this as an opportunity. I know it's already on your mind. It's, it's right next to diet. You know, first of the year. First of the year, every end cap in the retail stores. They got diet books, diet plans, diet magazines. Everything. That and getting your finances in order. Is there anything else? Something I missed? Exercise. We'll start another series on that. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> These are life situations. These are things that we deal with every day and they affect our spiritual walk. Okay? And uh, sometimes they can very much bog down our spiritual walk. Okay? So, let's start by finding out where are we. Then we'll talk about the plan. And so, what I would like to give to you is I have a, a personal expense sheet, if you'd like to take one. The way this works is you're just going to track what you spend. There's a slot on here for, you're going to fill in the slots. Because I don't know what you buy. I'm not telling you what I buy. And this is not for me. You're not turning this in. There's no record of this. This is for you. It will not be graded. <laughs> Except by our heavenly master. The teacher. But you can track your daily expenses on this sheet. Of course... Your best to do this whole family if there's several in the household and you're that's coming from one income anyway okay or you choose how you want to do it and then I have a weekly chart that at the end of that week that you would summarize and this has four weeks okay we can add to it we can change anything along the way I would like you to give input and say ah here's another category you forgot I went around the School today asking people to help me with these categories. Would you like to hear some of them? We'll, go, we'll, we'll shift to that feel good side. Okay. Some of the obvious groceries, gas. This is not your house payment, your insurance, your mortgage, or anything like that. We're going to do a monthly sheet for that too, and I'll hand that out next week. Groceries, gas, meals out. One of the most impacting statements I ever heard on finance was Brother Haney talking about us and how much we like to eat out and uh, the cost of eating out compared to eating at home. And uh, I know we use it sometimes as an excuse to get out and for fellowship, things like that. And if the money's there to spend on eating out and having fellowship, then more power to you. Okay? There's times when I justify it. Uh, but as far as if, let me drop another one on you here. We was at a conference one time, and we were staying at the Cheesy Hotel. It was cheesy. It was nasty. It made Super 8 look good. It was probably only 28 bucks, though. And I could afford it. Brother Leslie, on the other hand, was staying at an $80 a night hotel. Now, that's nothing nowadays. This was over 20 years ago. And that had been like the $150, $160 hotel back then. And he looked at us at the counter. He said, boys, when you get my age, you can stay at these hotels. When your finances are in order, you can stay at these hotels. But until then, you stay at the cheesy hotel. <laughs> He was dead serious, but he's making a good point. We were not, I wasn't 50 years old. I wasn't living with my children now away from home and having the same income. I was just trying to put bread on the table and put clothes on their back. So my priorities needed to be different. I stayed at the Cheesy Hotel and went to less conferences. Okay. So, these, you know, this, this is what's killing us. This is what's killing us. We've got kids leaving our homes 
expecting to live like mom and dad lived. I couldn't figure it out. Could you? Well, it didn't take very long. Can't have that, can't have that, can't have that. Man, how in the world do they survive? How does mom and dad survive? Well, it takes every dime. Okay. Meals out. Uh, where'd this one come from? Starbucks and Jamba Juice. Movie rental, because we know nobody's got cable. <laughs> Child care, books, magazines, supplies, clothing, shoes, home repair, music lessons, shoes. I, that was primarily for the girls. Is that the wrong category? So, oh, brother, in my house, that's a daily category. Yeah, that's a day, that goes on the daily category at times. You've never heard of uh, what.com is that? Zappos.com? Oh, yeah, click of the mouse, and them babies are in the mail in a box. That's okay, it's okay. Just track it. Track it, write it down. Okay. Oh, I should have put on here online purchases. I forgot. Yep. Music lessons, admission fees, car repair, school supplies, work supplies, haircuts, tanning. Tanning? <laughs> Must be one of my kids put that on there. Nails, you know, for driving out again into the wall. <laughs> oh, Pedicures, manicures. Oh, priorities. This is a priority deal. Let's really find out where you are. Let's really find out where your money's going. And if you're hungry at the end of the week, just look at your nails. <laughs> yeah, spend it any way you want, man. Just don't cry hungry. Eat those nails. <laughs> Outdoor sports, recreation, health club, gardening, cleaning supplies, dry cleaner and gifts. I'm sure that you'll be able to add to that and next week. This will be two pages. And we'll all laugh again. But this is a really a reality. It's a reality. Praise God. And we need to know where we are before we can begin to get help, get direction. Okay? Because I think if we would all admit it, we're not where we'd like to be financially. And I'm not talking about the generation of income. It's simply about what am I able to keep in my pocket so that I can respond to need, so that I can respond to prompting of the Lord concerning offerings that he says, you're robbing me. Oh, you know what? Why don't you read that, brother, at Malachi again? See, because we really shouldn't stop there because the Lord doesn't stop there. His issue is really not about robbing because he desires to bless. He desires to bless. He's simply wanting us to have the understanding of where's the blessing. Okay? Read on down there, Brother Hart. Will a man rob God, yet he robbed you, but you say, We're in it, we robbed thee in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. 
and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. He's picking a fight. I mean, he's challenging us. Come on, prove me that I won't do these things. This is what I'm wanting to do. This is what I'm wanting to do. What I find interesting about the Lord is he always gives us a season of time to express or to exercise faith in this. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Man, I've never done much investing, but I do know this. At the starting point, it's kind of painful. You know, what I could be using over here, I'm putting over there, and I'm not seeing anything. Really? I'm seeing a, a subtraction, a subtraction, a subtraction, a subtraction, a subtraction, a subtraction. Does that feel good? Subtract, subtract, take away, take away. But it's through the process of time that that begins to multiply beyond the subtraction to the place at some point the subtraction is immaterial anymore. Okay? There's something about the Lord desiring us to exercise faithfulness and a trust in Him. It's like the memorial praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm extending that energy. I'm going to keep praying. I'm believing. I am expressing faith in God. And at some point, it's like the rollover. And we begin to see the fruit and the evidence of prayers that was prayed way back then. That's what I thought when I saw Jade and Margie walk in. I thought, this is coming from way back. This is just not a quick extension here to the breathing of, of the Lord. And we see evidence of that in people's lives. Amen. Praise God. Brother Hart, would you come with any closing remarks you'd like to make? Oh, I'm going to have these at the door. Brother Mark, why don't you take them back and be there? Praise God. Aren't you thankful for the word of the Lord? Amen. I know I'm thankful. I've, I've been delving into scripture due to some commitments I've been committed to regarding finance. And I told pastor, I said, man, the Lord has taken me through it. And uh, it's causing me to relook at everything I do regarding the kingdom and my finance. Um, because this isn't about, this is between you or me and the Lord. Because it's not about how can I have more money. It's about being able to be kingdom-minded in our finance. Um, and I believe that's what the Lord is leading us to. I, I know I've made this statement a lot in the last few months, but I think so much of where we are in time, if this is in fact the last hour, and I so believe it is, Brother Toms, that everything that we hear from the Word applies to how God will use it in the end time. And if we'll hear the wisdom of the word of the Lord regarding finance now and allow the Lord through the application of the word and different disciplines to help us align our finances and get our thought process kingdom minded, then end time harvest can be funded by the church. Because all of a sudden, my... My money spent here or there, I'm not going to say where because it's different for all of us. My money spent here or there, that priority gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'm constantly looking ways for ways to invest into the kingdom. I'm not talking about into a local church. I'm talking about into the kingdom where God would lead. And you may be surprised where God would lead. And so I believe that these principles that we're covering tonight and in the weeks ahead will be based on how we apply them for God using them in the kingdom. Um, please don't, don't minimize this to 
church is trying to get into my finance. That would be the idea of the enemy to plant that thought in your mind so that you'll resist the word of God. Or be it from the church to try to get into your finance. Let God get into your finance. That's what he wants to do. And he'll help each one of us. He really, really will. And he'll bless us so that we can bless him. I, I thought his pastor was talking about being young. You know, most people, the older they get, the more money they make. I'm the other way around for whatever reason. I'm backwards. I made more money when I was 25 than I make now. And uh, that's just God's way. I'm okay with that. I want his way. Um, but, you know, usually you try to work towards increases. Um, God had a different plan with me and my family. I make about 50% now of what I made 10 years ago. And that's fine. And I've, I've thought, Lord, I really missed it then, didn't I? <laughs> I mean, we were faithful in our tithes. My mother taught me that when we were pretty young and faithful in giving. But I, I look back and I realize how my priorities with all the rest of my income was so different. And I thought, Lord, I wish I had now what I had then because, oh, where I would invest it in the kingdom. I don't want a different house. I don't want different cars. I don't want different clothes. I don't want... Oh, God, forgive. I've prayed forgive. I believe he has forgiven. But, and then he does that. He doesn't hold it over our heads. He forgives, and then as repentance does, we turn. We learn, and we grow, and we move from that direction. And that's what God does. And we become kingdom-minded in our finance, which is so critical. So critical in this hour. Amen? Praise God. Why don't you stand together? Thank you, Pastor. I would encourage everyone to participate in this, even if your finances are great and in order. It's a good thing. It may be that the Lord would use you to help somebody else, to instruct them, or to share with them how the Lord has helped you. And that could be an inspiration and an example to others. Amen. There's a story of a I think it's been told of a priest or a pastor or somebody that went into this investment guy. Had a million dollars, I think it was. And uh, he finally went to this investment financial representative, true story, wanting to know, okay, I need your help. I've got a million dollars now, and I, I just don't know what to do. And so the big financial representative said, well, tell me how you got this money. What, how much money do you make? And I think the guy made $8,000 a year. 12000 Okay. It was a small amount. Um, or a nominal amount. Um, $12,000 a year. He said, you got a million dollars making 12000 a year? And the guy said, well, this is what I've done. I just... Every month I committed to taking this much right here. It wasn't much, but just this much and putting it here, wherever here was. And I committed. I wouldn't do anything. But And the financial representative said, you don't need me. You need to teach this to everybody else. And it's interesting. There's principles in the Word that will help us. One thing I've learned is it doesn't matter how much money anybody makes. It's the application of the principles of the word that make all of the difference. I have a client that's worth over $2 million right now. And the client never made more than $50,000 a year all of their working life. But there were some principles. It's the law of the harvest. We reap what we sow. Praise God. I'm blessed by this. I'm encouraged. I'm learning. I'm taking notes. And I'm praying. God, lead me. I'm looking forward to more. Let's pray together tonight. Father, we thank you so very, very much for your word. Father, let it do in me what you want it to do. I believe you're leading us, Father, for the sake of the kingdom. 
I pray that your will would be done in this to the glory of the kingdom of God for the sake of the body of Christ as you choose. Lead each one of us by your spirit. We trust in you. We trust in your leading. We desire your blessing. We desire your blessing. Father, we know that your word will lead us and guide us. Thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' precious name. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.